All right, we're gonna count off. Nick one, but two, but V. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Welcome to the Deal Gaming Podcast. To this episode, we're gonna be talking about Megaloot, Dead Island Two, Memoria Polis. That's so much better pronounced than when it's all one word. And Dale and Dawson stationary supplies. But first, my name is Christian. I'm Bobby. I'm Nick. I can't wait to hear why Tegloro loves us so much. This is a whole mouthful. He left us uh, quite the review. Complete and, rando, by yeah. the way, Tegloro. <laughs> Not a yeah, friend yeah. of ours. Yeah, no, we, we, never we haven't known him for 10 years. I have never done <laughs> recreational drugs with that guy before in my life. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the show is brought to you by uh, reviewing us anywhere you can, whether it be xxx.com or Steam or on Amazon or anywhere else where you leave reviews like Apple or Spotify, where we actually have places that you can review us. Uh, the, the review of the, of the week, I want to say is by tag Loro. These guys stream the episodes live on Twitch. And I try to catch it live whenever I can, but often I end up listening. To you. They're always funny. Don't take themselves too seriously. And it's nice having the hosts that are proper those close to my age. They are way more relatable than some shows where the hosts are teen to 20 something year olds and do something as a full time job. Looking at some of the older reviews, they have been addressing some of the old complaints I saw, like the audio balance better, and they have no, they have now spun off a new show for the Magic the Gathering on the DL. Oh, now we get serious when it so comes to the So the main show oh, is more focused I on see, gaming. see how it is. Oh, MTG comes up and we switch to the real voice. Okay, Nick. But first, the first half of that was uh, an audio clip sent in by Tegloro himself. That's, <laughs> That's what, what it sounds like. like. It's a large man. His weight is pushing his trache- trachea. I'm not kidding. only He's our not dear lunch. friends can leave reviews like this, which thank you, Taylor, for leaving us a five out of five stars. Thanks for not giving us a four out of five or a three out of five. You know, you committed. Uh, you can, too, if you're listening out there. Reviews really help us. They're the main thing, according to Spotify, that drives the algorithm so people can see our episodes. So that is cool. Only if you like us. If you don't like us, that's fine, too. Don't leave a review. Just keep <laughs> Send listening. Send a letter in. <laughs> Send a letter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, contact our mailing address. On this show, we ping things, just noting something interesting. And guys, uh, Lord of the Rings Tales of the Shire was delayed until 2025, which was, or which is the Animal Crossing set in the Lord of the Rings uh, universe. This is sad because Rianne was super excited. We're having our kid in a little bit less than a month, and she was looking forward to this game coming out, coinciding perfectly with the timing of a newborn that, you know, doesn't move around a lot and she's going to have lots of downtime, wants to play this game on the uh, on the Switch or on PC when she's just chilling. So I'm looking for newborn baby games out there that are coming out. Anything oh. you can recommend for my dear wife who just wants to chill and play a game that she can pause at any time that's low stakes, not action. 80s 2. 80s 2. Elden, Elden Ring. <laughs> that's good. Elton, yeah. Call of Duty Warzone. Yeah, all good suggestions. If you have suggestions, put them in the Discord, uh, please. We're a desperate household at this point. Uh, Bobby, what are you pinging this week? This week, I'm pinging uh, BrickCon 2024. I've never heard of this before, but of course it exists. So this is a Lego convention where people bring these really extravagant set pieces that they've built. Uh, the one I'm talking about specifically is the entire town of Stardew Valley was recreated wow. in Lego form. It looks Whoa. so good. It looks amazing. I, I mean, all these things look amazing. So I linked a video from Beyond the Brick on TikTok. Great channel for this stuff, by the way. And he just shows the entire town and, and comments on it. Check that one out. It looks incredible. They got it down to the detail. It looks perfect. Also on that channel, I noticed with even more views, somebody at, I, I don't know if it's the same BrickCon event, but somebody made a... Um, like a factory where they produce battle droids with like moving conveyor belts and everything. It was, That's it was dope. equally incredible, but really just wanted to shout out to the, uh, for the, um, the Stardew Valley one. Cause that I, I loved Legos as a kid, huge Lego fan. I had friends who would go to like competitions where you'd play and, uh, or you'd build things 
and it really wasn't about winning, but it was about uh, you got to keep anything that you used to build your thing. So they do this and they'd collect just massive amounts of Legos. And we would build things like this, not nearly as nice as Stardew Valley, but we would build entire towns and we would basically like role play. Um, I know it's crazy, <laughs> right? Me role play. What happened to you, dude? What I kind know, of trauma you really... pushed you away from? Well, I mean, I was a kid paladin. then and then I grew up, you know, oh, I put away childish it. things. <laughs> But <laughs> his character was a, a minifigure, Lego minifigure. <laughs> That's his name. We we didn't play uh, we didn't play like uh, individual characters. We would have our own like kingdom, basically. Well, no, we probably had individual characters. But I had a band of ninjas that lived in the woods in a medieval setting for some reason. So I don't know. So I was always on the hunt for like ninjas, and we had like a whole economy, dude. Like like some pieces <laughs> were more valuable than others, and we would trade and barter for them. It was a whole thing. That's man. awesome. That's awesome, dude. I, I was so really cool. into Legos. So seeing something like this is very exciting. I may check this out and see like you know what does it take to make a visit to a brick con. That that would be worth seeing i know we have legoland down here in southern california crazy enough i've never been but um i almost i've never been either yeah i almost uh um chaperoned a field trip there once but then it got canceled that was my one opportunity and apparently <laughs> wait, i never decided a, to <laughs> no you're an adult dude every weekend is your fucking opportunity yeah i know it's 45 but, dude, minutes it's from so our house when my girlfriend and i like do th even when we go to disneyland it's like two grown adults by themselves no kids at a theme park it's it's weird it's not a good look so, Dude, wait, wait, wait. I, I the school more like more people are there without kids than with kids bobby you're too old for people to care you're getting the, no offense dude uh, there's a certain period i'm in my 30s i can care what other people think you i think you're past you're quickly going past the point where you get to not give a fuck anymore i think yeah well also just being around a place with a whole bunch of kids is like uh you know I, <laughs> I'm talking to parents and a soon to be parent here, but, um, yeah, yeah I don't fuck know. your kids. <laughs> <laughs> when kids. you don't have kids, you don't like being around them. You get, also, you get kind of, <laughs> I'm shocked that Bobby linked a TikTok video like that alone is shaking me to my core. And then he brought up the role play stuff as a kid. I mean, my whole worldview is up. Who is this guy? <laughs> it's topsy turvy. It's crazy. <laughs> um, so I have a couple of tags for this. Um, I watched a mini documentary, mini documentary about why Legos are so exp expensive. Turns out that the price per bri brick has actually gone down if adjusted for inflation. So uh, when they first came out, it was about 10 cents a brick, and now it's about 11 cents a brick. And then if you adjust for inflation, it's like 8 cents a brick. So it's, um, yeah, it's actually gone down. It's just that the sets have far more pieces than they've ever had before. Mm -hmm. So uh, especially the adult stuff, you know, they, they have the thousands of pieces and stuff so yeah and there's just uh, more legos out there i mean back when i was a kid it was like you got pirates you got underwater there was maybe a modern day set there was a medieval one like they they had a few themes but now it's like literally every ip out there has yeah multiple lego sets for it it's basically um they 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 were gonna lose the company it wasn't doing very well uh in like the 80s i believe 80s 90s and um they uh started listening to the adults that had brick on and stuff like that and what they wanted so they came out with like the first millennium falcon and they made so much money off of that they were like oh we got to start listening to the adults so they started building things for the adults and then save the company and all this stuff yeah so uh that's one thing and then the other thing was i saw during that that there's a um, competition show called Lego Masters. So I started watching that. I love competition shows, reality competition shows, and it's about Legos. Um, it's pretty good. It's, I've seen definitely better reality shows, but um, because it's Legos, it makes it so much better. So I'm on the first season of that, and it's good. Nice. nice. Cool. And what are you bringing this week, Emilio? Oh, uh, some board games. So... Um, I've been doing nothing but work. That's why I haven't been on here, guys. It's been like 80 hour weeks and it's insane. And then, um, two weeks ago I went to Mexico, uh, to a beach house for Sam's birthday. So I, there's no, barely even electricity there, let alone video games, but we did play, um, some board games. So there's one called Blockus, B-L-O-C-K-U-S. And it's the simplest thing ever. She bought it for like 10 bucks from Target and it's, it was a big hit. Um, it's I brought it up because it has the easiest rules I've ever seen. It's like your first piece has to go like this and then the rest of them connect like this and that's it. And you're like, okay. And then the last person to go or the first, yeah, the last person who can still make a move wins. 
that's pretty much it and it's just super fun it looks complex it's very pretty uh but it is not complex i highly recommend it especially if you can get it for sale for 10 bucks and we also played loteria which is like the oldest mexican, yeah. mexican game ever and uh oh the link is gone that's so weird um anyway it's basically bingo with figure not figurines but like pictures of items so um instead of b5 it'll be a ladder and if you have the ladder you put it, it's so simple even the four-year-olds were playing it and uh but it was a big hit because like all the old mexican played it when they were a kid and everybody oh and we bought the super fancy one the 50 dollar loteria like we're rich mexicans now. <laughs> so uh, we uh we played that it was very cool like i like fun for the whole family Every, Everywhere from grandmother all the way down to two generations down, three generations down, we're all playing it. It was awesome. It was a cool little uh, experience. That's cool, man. Uh, It's pretty well. Okay. (laughs) Moving on down to highlights. So these are games that we have been playing. And Bobby prepped us last week and followed through. Hit us with, uh, got some epic what, dude? Oh, boy. Yeah. So last week I said I was going to do it, and I did it. This week I played Mega Loot. Um, this game comes close to being a good game. It, it's tough, man. It's tough. I, there's some things that I really like about it and I, it, it frustrates me because they were so close. So this is an auto battler that focuses on inventory management. Um, I didn't know inventory management was like a genre, but apparently it is. Uh, and the auto battler of course is you don't really do anything when you're fighting in this game you actually do you click attack but that's about it but it's really about getting loot organizing your loot combining it uh pairing it up with different kinds of loot so you get better effects and it's that part is really satisfying um it's addictive but i don't know if it's satisfying though because i found myself getting really frustrated with this game and like not touching it and then like feeling the urge to go back to it and then playing it again and spending way too much time on it and being like, but this game isn't good. Why am I doing this? Like, uh, I don't know. It was a really weird experience. And I think the biggest problem the game has, and this is all over the reviews, is it doesn't have any meta progression between runs. So it's not like a typical roguelike where you make uh, or you make some money from your run, you spend that on something that makes you more powerful on the next run. There's none of that. It has different classes and also different like talent trees or perks or mods, I guess you could call them, but you don't unlock them either. You just... Mm they're just there and you pick them and you can choose which ones you want or not choose any at all. And they don't necessarily get like, make you do more damage. There's usually like a negative one that allows you to get a positive one, but it it was really strange to play a game like this um, because you don't see it anymore at all. And I think some people, it's a true roguelike as a uh, no roguelite at all. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And I don't think a lot of people like those kinds of games. They want to come away with something and like have some sort of progression or, you know, it's, it seems like a cheap trick, but it it works. Like if you lock things and say, well, you've got to play this amount or accomplish these goals to unlock it. Then people are like, Ooh, I got something to work towards, you know, and there's some motivation there. But then when you take that away, uh, it's a completely different experience. Like it's just, it's like, that shouldn't be my motivation for playing this game. It should be because the game loop is fun, but I, I don't know. For some reason, it does kind of take away from it. I, looking forward to Mega Loot too, but the, the <laughs> first one, I, I can say like, I don't know, man. Like it you just, can't put the juice in the box now that you've been exposed to this meta progression through so many other games. Even though the gameplay itself is satisfying, this like rings hollow for you now. Well, there there were some problems with the gameplay too because it was difficult. It's all very random, but uh, it's, you get good runs and bad runs, but it, it feels like you're never really quite getting the momentum that you want with like most of the runs. So I, I don't know. There, there are a few things that could be improved there, but it, there's some parts that, that really work, like getting the gear and the way that you match up the gear and they give you like these synergies between them. Like there was like this nugget, this kernel of like a really good idea there that was like, uh, I don't know, didn't quite follow through. And if you look at the Steam page for Mega Loot, the reviews all say the same thing. The game is like 10 bucks, by the way. So, I mean, oh, not a huge okay. investment here. Wasn't expecting too much. And like when I read the reviews. Way to punch down, Bobby. 
<laughs> I know, man, but I, I, I just, I gotta be honest here. Like this was my experience with the game. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're basically, you're, you're looking for, you're playing a slot machine and hoping for the good run. The one that makes you feel like, well, oh, fuck which yeah. a lot of games yeah. are, but in this one, I was just like, I can't get any of these classes to work except for the berserker. Like that's the only one that I, I feel like I can get anything done with. And I, I don't know. And it was all just, it, it got very repetitive and very much the same thing too. So I, it kind of wore out its welcome, but it, it did introduce me to this inventory management game type, which apparently there are a lot of them. I'll talk more about that in, uh, when we get to on the radar, but apparently it's a, uh, it's a whole thing. It's a whole genre. I'm excited. dude. Uh, yeah. Did you, uh, will you play this next week, Bobby? What? Megaloot? Yeah. No. No, no, he's done moving on <laughs> never again Bobby. so in defense we're not in defense but just to give some context to the developer this is their first paid product so i mm-hmm. think maybe you know it's 80 percent or 79 percent positive on steam right now it's got Pretty 1800 good. reviews like i feel like maybe he made a good or they made a good chunk of cash here and now going into something like a mega loot two, they can learn from you know, very articulate feedback like yourself, Bobby. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm looking forward to Mega Loot too. I think this guy's got some great ideas. I don't know if it's like a solo dev or it must be like a small team at least. It's not a big developer. And yeah, I, I did notice that this was one of their, or you said their first paid game. So they have yeah. done something before, but yeah, man. I mean, there's some really good stuff here that works and the reviews aren't like, aren't bad like they're mostly positive. So, I mean, it is a good game, but it's just, it's frustrating because it, it, it could be so much you more, see the but, potential there <laughs> but that's how it always is whenever you're creating anything whether it be a video game tv show movie whatever art you know it's like it's a process and you know you put that product out there and then you you take what you learn and you do better next time so yeah like I this podcast bobby right like those <laughs> angry comments you got last week on your oh, terrible yeah. moba opinion i was joking <laughs> <laughs> savages i was i was inaccurately quoted but uh yeah this this podcast is definitely a work in progress a long process a long process all right cool uh, anyone else on mega loot no nope <laughs> nope <laughs> it's funny you didn't have a good time with it but i kind of want to play it now i hope maybe i can play yeah, and it you should capsule. man like i like i said i kept going back to this game i deleted the desktop icon because i was like because that's how i launch my games now too by the way i always put the desktop icon there um but i was just like that will keep me because every time i saw it i was just like all right i'm going back i'm doing one more round let's see <laughs> i'm gonna figure this out like there is something there it did hook yeah, yeah. me. so yeah all right cool uh i'm gonna be talking about memoria polis which right off the bat this name was all one name last week and when they released it became two names which is way easier to pronounce so whoever had this mega brain idea this 5000 iq marketing move congratulations uh thank you for doing that Uh, and it makes sense you know uh polis the old latin word for city memoria your your memory So it is the memory of a city that you're building. And this is a grand strategy choice-based city builder. Uh, I think this is the first game I can really say that it's a city, it's a city builder that is a grand strategy game. You go through four different ages that play pretty differently from each other. And your strategic decisions at the beginning really affect your strategic decisions at the end. You go through like a storyline. It was really, um, it, it made me feel great. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> it's it's a simplified city building, so it's like big picture management. When I talked about this game last time, I don't think I uh, explained it super properly. So the buildings that your people live and the roads are automatically generated in between these uh, government structures or wonders or bigger buildings that that you're building. So it's not completely a hands-off city builder, but these buildings that you build affect attraction and the culture of the region and the satisfaction of the people in the area. And then depending on those three categories, people will move in around that building. Now, say you build uh, the Circus Maximus or something. Everyone who builds their home around there is going to be a culture subtype, uh, a culture subtype of their culture, which is confusing. Circus Uh, folk. Yeah, and they'll be blue on the map. And then if you build a military barracks on the other side of your city, all the soldiers will congregate there. And if you build your political offices on the south of the city, like your Senate, 
all the senators will live there. So you're coloring in the map with the different cultures uh, of your city. And then basically some of them don't like each other and you have to manage their competing priorities as you expand the city bigger and bigger. So some of the soldiers have problems with some of the religious factions and they'll have like street gang warfare and you'll Ooh. pass laws to, to try to like balance their needs or to get them to stop. Or maybe you want to kick one out. And to do that, you have to use the military. So it's all, it it's really in depth and there's nothing like this out there as far as city building or grand strategy games. Like they've done something really neat and, and new here. Mm. Um, it looks the, great too. It looks great, dude. Uh, the, like it's really satisfying to zoom in, see your carts moving around. I haven't seen any jankiness because a lot of it is auto generated and it's a small team. So I would expect some sort of like clipping or anything like that. But no, it looks beautiful. I'm going through the cities, looking at the gang warfare, looking at the festivals. I'm like, damn, I'm in it. Um, this game, I think, is based off the real city of Rome, which was the first city in the world to reach uh, a million people. And the TV show Rome, if you've seen it, gives a good insight into like, you know, the street gangs that kind of did run these neighborhoods. And, you know, the soldiers did kind of all live very close to each other. And the Senate class and the plebs and the slaves had their own area. And that is what this is mimicking. And I think it does it in a really satisfying way. Um, my city ended up being dominated by the military and eventually they were so fucking gung ho assholes that they started like curbing my production of like timber and stone and stuff. Cause they were siphoning so many people to the army. Uh, I never, I never curbed that. Uh, my city was just like a military dictatorship and I had to live that way. But going into my next run, I'm looking forward to hopefully balancing things a little bit more and more street warfare. I think if I had up my religious faction, they would kind of like come down and like the fanatics on the hill with like giant clubs and they'd beat the military people over the head. And maybe I'd have a little bit more um, e easy time growing out. Uh, the last thing is like the buildings that you build help you appreciate history. Like I built the circus Maximus and it's this chariot racing mega mega structure. And it's like a fifth of the entire map, you know, it's huge. Jeez. And it was, it was huge when it was built. It was, 621 meters long for all our American listeners. That's 12.5 American football fields uh, or 5,021 McDonald's single cheeseburger hamburgers. So <laughs> <laughs> this game is like history crap. Oh, I understand now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's my kind of language right there. Yeah. <laughs> Can I get that in nuggets? Yeah. Uh, I will have to work on the conversion. Uh, this game is, is history crack. It's, it, it's immersive and, the mechanics play into what it might have been like in the real city of Rome. And when the last age ends, I was very satisfied with my city, even though the military ran it, even though there, I made so many mistakes looking at the city, it looks beautiful. Uh, I expanded, I unlocked a lot of buildings and I can kind of see what I want to do next time because there's all these branching, there's all these branching paths. And once you start down one, uh, it, it denies entry into the other one. So there's lots to explore. And uh, yeah, guys, any questions on Memoria Polis? Is this a game you would play? Can you lose? I don't think you can. Well, I shouldn't say that. You, you can just run end out up of with food. a shitty ass town. Yeah, you can run out of food and people can leave if there's too much internal strife. During one of my like civil riots, I had like a thousand citizens leave or something in the direct area. And I was like, oh shit, that's that's gonna impact me but then they moved right back when i quelled it so i think it's like i don't know if the game is meant for you to lose but it is meant for you to manage these mechanics um and be punished if you don't do that optimally i guess yeah that really means your city fucking sucks that they're like we rather live in the woods than fucking <laughs> yeah. whatever your fucking circle jerk you're managing around here yeah 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 jerking off in the woods <laughs> uh okay that was me uh emilio dead island 2 yep uh, the only gaming i've done is like i played maybe two hours of uh i mean i'm always playing arena magic the Gathering arena but um on my phone but um i played maybe two or three hours of dead island one day that i 
I stayed up too late and uh, I'm really starting to feel the groove of it and enjoying it more. Um, if you don't know, it's a first person zombie melee survival. Um, I think maybe at some point there's guns, but I don't really remember any of the guns. There, were there guns in the other Dead Islands? Yes. Probably? Yeah, but they were pretty late in the game. Yeah. It's yeah. usually, yeah. it's like mostly the final like 25% of each game has guns because the mobs, gotcha. like the zombie mobs are getting insane. So you need like guns and explosives and shit. So it's all about um, crafting bigger and better weapons, versions of things that you find around. Anything from um, a pole that you ripped out of the ground to, um, I, I think I found a, like a like a general custard sh- sword or something that was in a display case that was pretty powerful. So you're always looking for anything that'll stab or cut. And uh, they actually attack. They did a good job with the combat. Uh, I'm very, I'm, I'm enjoying it and understanding it more. Um, heavy attacks, when to do them, why to do them. Um, your special combo that you do, um, like that goes into a special animation. Guess what? It, that doesn't mean that the other zombies around you can't hit you. Uh, in almost every game, you know, you go in your special combo and everything else kind of like stands away. No, everything's biting you while you're doing your special combo. So you really have to positioning is huge. Audio cues is huge. Um, just generally being smart, not not overextending yourself, um, not drawing too much attention to yourself. Like like, you know, The Walking Dead or something. If you're playing through an episode of The Walking Dead, it's very. Don't be a dumbass, and maybe you'll be okay. There's also some luck. Uh, one thing I don't like is uh, as soon as even you're clearing one huge house, because you start in the Hollywood Hills, they're very big homes, and you let's say you clear the pool area, um, which, by the way, uh, I tested some of the mechanics, and it's cool. Um, I have something called zombie bait, so it's like basically a chum for sharks. I threw it into the pool, so a bunch of... Um, Oh, they all went into the pool and then I threw my electric, my electric wrench in there and it killed them all by electricity. And I was like, Oh, that's pretty sweet. Um, so there's a lot of stuff like that. I once saw uh, a guy anyway. fish like that in the Netherlands. Yeah. With, with electricity. Yeah. With a battery. And he was like zapping the canal. I was like, this is illegal in Canada. <laughs> it's, surely it's illegal here where there's presumably way less fish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But if you clear the pool area and you go in the house or whatever and you're looking around, you come back out to the pool, the zombies are back. I didn't appreciate that very much. I guess they probably had their reasons, but that's what makes it survival, right? They're infinite and you're not. So I I guess there's a reason for it. Um, Let's see. Uh, I am playing as Carla. I think she's an MMA fighter. She's Hispanic and she's dumb and strong like me. So uh, and she has stupid one liners. So. Just like you. Um, yeah, I'm having a good time with it. What's that? Is it just like you? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I am, I'm digging it, for sure. Titties! Yeah, uh, it, I've always wanted to play this. I was wanting to wait until it's on a sale. I played Dead, Light and, Dead, Light, Dead Island all the way through for the first one. Uh played with a full party as well. And uh, couldn't stop saying, who do you voodoo for like fucking three months? It was uh, <laughs> such a good game. That character is um, one of the first characters you meet. He tells you how to basically kill zombies. Yeah, I think the combat's better in this game, for sure. Oh, yeah, probably. Like, uh, yeah. What was it, like an eight-year difference? I know, yeah. I know nothing about I was about trying to, uh, I had like a, I had that rapier or whatever, and I was doing heavy attacks with it, and it just wasn't doing shit. And then I just started clicking fast, and I was like, oh, you just got to, uh, death by a thousand cuts you need to go quick with this thing that's what a rapier does and then there's things that are kind of in the middle and yeah what kind of zombies are these are they like easy to mow down fast runners are they slow walking dead dumb mostly zombies? slow walking dead yeah uh but there are runner types and then there's um of course you always run into the police that have body armor on so uh you got to look for weaknesses in their body armor to kill them okay what is this yeah i don't what is this game doing something crazy that like left for dead two or other zombie survivors doesn't do like, what's the unique part about it? Do you, well, is it the RPG. humor? Yeah. It's not, oh, it's it's not like left for dead. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, a straight okay. up like yeah. co-op RPG. I love the first dead Island. God, dude, I'd play that again. I should probably just play, just play the second, second one, one. but yeah. I, I bought a four pack. I don't know if steam even 
does that anymore. Oh, you can't no, do that anymore. anymore. I don't think do. Fuck. Yeah, I bought a four pack for me and my friends, and we all played it, and it was just an awesome experience. So yeah, the that yeah, I can't up. say anything really bad. I mean, it's corny, and that's what you get with zombies, though. I, I think the game mechanics speak for themselves. I mean, hold their own. Nice the graphics are great. Like, yeah, no, no complaints. But you know, I'm four hours in. Right. The so, new sniper. S- yes, Nick. One of the main differences between like Left 4 Dead and this game, right, and some of the other ones, is that this is actually open world, and so you can like revisit places and go like back and forth to them. And just like Emilio said, is that like. There's slow ones, there's ones that are like huge monsters, there's like super quick ones, all these other ones, all these other things, but the the game focuses on melee combat and crafting, while like in Left 4 Dead it's very, very limited, right? Um, the other thing is that with this game, if you play with four players, you actually can buff each other, and then like, uh, because the, the zombies actually get really hard as soon as you get them full like party, um, it's not just like, oh, you know, you ba- bash them once in the head and they're dead. Um, they actually get like really difficult. They actually get way more aggressive and things like that. And um, it it really pays off to play with four players because like you can increase attack speed. You can do all these different things that make people way more strong, like way stronger. Like your armor bar is like uh, replenished faster and things like that. So this first dying light, uh, the this, new one probably. This, this is better. Yeah, dying. Or you to, like this one more? I should say. I haven't played two, but from Dead Island one, if it's a direct upgrade, I've always liked Dead Island more than. Um, more than dying light only because dying light is almost like a direct copy of dead island i'm pretty sure dead island one came out before dying light one and dead island i feel like being the super athletic guy who can like jump around and shit like that and like climb up a fucking 14 story building is unrealistic in a zombie apocalypse right it it is his job per se but in dead island like you don't have that you don't have like the like ninjutsu fucking moves and shit. It's way more like <laughs> Dead Island ha- is for the people, and Dying Dead Light Island- is for the <laughs> Oters. <laughs> De- Dead Island's <laughs> very much like deal with the problem you have, versus you can possibly run away from it. Got it. Cool. Yeah. Nick, you're gonna sell us some paper. Uh, yeah, me and twenty of my other friends. Um, <laughs> No, so I'm here to talk about Dale and Dawson Stationary Supply. Um, it's very similar to Among Us in the type of game that it is. I don't know what they're officially called. I think they're called... Um, social Deduction. Social Deduction, social. yeah. Is that it? Okay. Um, this one is very interesting. There's a lot more to things to do than in um, Among Us. There's three teams, kind of. Only, but However, only two of them can win. There's a, there's a manager who's his own team, right? He's by himself. He can promote an assistant manager, and we didn't think there was any benefit to that, but there actually is. Um, So when you promote someone to assistant manager, it reduces the amount of um, tasks they have to do, and tasks are how you win the game passively. Um, So there's a manager, there's slackers, which have slacker tasks, and then there's the specialists. Now, the slacker tasks are all in red, right? Except for like three of them, like shut down the servers, start a trash fire, all these other things, right? So if you catch somebody doing one of those black tasks, you know for sure that they're a, that they're a, a slacker, right? Your job as the manager is to listen to corporate and fire people when it's needed, but also fire the right people, right? You can't, you don't want to fire the people that are increasing your productivity and that can make you win because as a, as a, as a manager, you only have one task, right? Everybody does more work than you. They have like three to four tasks. And as a manager, you only have one task, but your kind of job is to monitor the whole the whole arena. But everything in the game interacts with other people, essentially, right? You're like sending emails to other players or you're sending emails to NPCs. You're playing Snake. You're playing Minesweeper. You're infecting other people's uh, computers with viruses. You're getting the boss to unlock your computer if it has a virus and things like this, right? And in it, we ended up playing with like I think at the height of eleven people, but like most of the night it was like ten. I would say that the more people, the better. And the reason being is that the more people you have, the more inclined to like they are to follow the rules. Now you do get your weird guy who's like not wanting to do any of the tasks, and they're a detriment. But like it, you really if you really want to win, which you should, right? It's not fun if you're playing not to win. If you really want to win. You have to do your tasks. Now, if you're a specialist, the quote unquote good guys, right? You have to do slacker tasks sometimes. And they don't help the slackers, but they make you look suspicious. 
So it's like buy like a bag of, like buy a bag of chips, eat them in the lobby. That's a slacker test. Yeah, start a dance party. <laughs> uh, you know, put someone's stapler in Jello, steal someone's mouse. Uh, Wait, so you why might do you get fired? Why do you have to do all that as a specialist? Because you but... get bored. I guess your character gets bored or something. But it's just okay. like a yeah yeah genius is uh very close to craziness dude like, so you, <laughs> you know your best people have to break they're so cooped up man they got to go crazy sometimes and yeah, then yeah. sometimes you can get multiple slacker tests in a row as a as a specialist so it makes you really look suspicious you're like dude i saw nick in the server room and then i fucking saw nick uh buying chips and then i saw him pet the cats you're like dude what is going on here and you're like, no, no, <laughs> look man, look i'm nick? not a slacker <laughs> like it's a it's a big deal um so nick uh great good great amazing i would say i would say uh so i'm thinking dlg con six fucking for sure no yeah it the the main thing is that you got to get people to want to win right like like i said if you don't get people that don't want to play the game or anything like that play it like play a different game but what you mean like if you have real life slackers yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't be a real life slacker when I you're think a slacker though, is full of we when won't have that problem, I don't think. When you have a, when you're, how a, many factions are there, and how many ways, how many, how many teams can win? So there's two ways to win for each team, right? Um, so each team has tasks. Completing those tasks um, will fill up a bar for your team, and then the opposing team also has their sla- tasks, right? So like the slackers have their tasks, and it moves the bar the other direction. So you know the slackers are doing slacker shit. When you see the bar moving, you know the specialists are doing specialist shit when they when you see the bar moving. That's one way to win for each team, right? Whether or not you fill the bar in for your team. The second way to win is to fire the slackers, or there's an equal amount of slackers than there is um than there is specialists. Now, as the manager, you can be fired or voted out. And if that happens, a uh an employee, a random employee gets turned into the manager and whoever, including gets, a slacker, in, uh, including, no, 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 but there is something that's special that happens. To, oh, uh, no, 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 no. They can't be, they can't be a, a manager because they become a manager. Exactly. They're no longer a slacker. Gotcha. So the thing is, there is something special for the first person to get eliminated every round. They become a janitor. <laughs> And the janitors, <laughs> okay. they actually go have, on. They actually have a role. They have to pick so up. The, they have to pick up the office. And if the office gets dirtier and dirtier, the slackers get more points. Like their bar fills up more. So like even the even the janitor is still in it, and he has his own tasks, like pick up the trash, like pick like empty the shredder and things like that. And but really, he he's oh I guess he could he's like kind of an agent of chaos. He can make the he can he do can, whatever he wants. Yeah, yeah, he can. Yeah, he can make the slackers win or the specialists. Yes, if he was the former slacker, he can make the slackers win. He can be like, I ain't picking Nick, up trash. What happens if the manager promotes a slacker to assistant manager? Do they? Are, is it like a yes? Hidden... Here's the last thing really? I mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's a hidden. It's a hidden fucking technical move. So when you promote someone to assistant manager. They only have one to two tasks instead of three to four. So their ability to score points as a slacker goes down. Like they, they have to do more tasks, right? And you only get a certain amount of tasks per five minutes or whatever the fuck it is, right? And so if you promote a slacker to assistant manager, and you don't know because you don't know the beginning of the game, you can assign assistant manager whatever you want. You can demote and promote people whenever you want. When you put someone as assistant manager all of their tasks are reduced to one to two. And so they get less, they get less points because they have less tasks, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But what they can also but do is they, what are, are they, an extra set of eyes, an extra set of eyes, to be ratting on people. That's the whole point. They are the ones that are supposed to be watching people while you're doing your own tasks in your office. Cause the more tasks you do, the more complex they get. Like at one point, like in the beginning of the game, like one of my tasks was like, email the supply company, tell them you need print like a printer. That's it. Right. By like task round number seven, it was like fill out this report and then email this company, then order like six mouses and then like and then email this other employee and then pin, like print the email and then put it on a pin board. And that's all one task. So um, I'm going to promote the janitor and just have the most loyal motherfucker ever. I don't know if you can promote to him, but you should. From janitor to assistant <laughs> manager, janitor. dude. 
I'm back, Welcome baby. To the team. <laughs> <laughs> this but, game um, sounds so fun, dude. I saw a clip where like a bunch of slackers had locked themselves in a room and they couldn't <laughs> and they were like lighting trash on fire and doing a dance party and the manager like couldn't get in. Like, is there a way so, you can like block off the office? So the tutorial does not teach you everything, and that's part of the fun, right? Is finding out like the chaos that you can cause. Like you can take a shit for eighty hours if you want, and just be completely hidden from the like the the group, whatever. But there's there's two ways to open doors that are locked: the manager's keys and the janitor's keys. And if they have their own keys and they haven't been stolen, excuse me, and they haven't been stolen. They kind of have free reign to lock whatever. Like, like, they usually lock the server room. But the thing is, if the servers go down, because they can go down naturally, um, the slackers get points the longer it's down. If something happens, like a virus, and, like, an office room is locked, and it takes you longer to, like, fix the virus, the slacker bar goes up the longer bad things happen. And so, yeah, there's a set of, there's two sets of keys, and you can take them from people and things like that. So they can, like, lock themselves in a room and do as much shit as they want, but... Um, there's the Lord there, of the Flies turning the office into the Lord of the Flies sounds like the way to go, man. You really, you it- really, really can't mess with the amount of slackers and specialists. But what you can do is you can, um, you can change how valuable the slackers, um, actions are. And we had to adjust it a little bit, not because the slackers were bad, but because like the specialists were winning every time. And it's because they outnumber them usually like four to one. Oh, I see. DLG Con six for sure. I can't wait to be a yeah. slacker or a jam. How much is it? Eight, eight bucks. That's it. Eight bucks. Oh, done. One hundred percent. Yeah, check it's it out on a shelf somewhere. Doesn't even know it's purchased. That's Dale and Dawson Stationery Supply, a <laughs> social engineering <laughs> job. Oh, also you can play the map from the office. That's the last thing I'll say. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, that's what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be the office simulator or something. It makes sense. I wonder if there's other any other famous offices. Office Bobby, space? help me out here. Office. Is there any other famous offices? Then Dunder Mifflin. Yeah, we could recreate mm. like any workplace comedy. Uh, probably like a Thanks police station. <laughs> <laughs> on the radar. Moving on to games that we haven't played but that have caught our attention, and Bobby is back with inventory management round two. Yep. So I started looking at other inventory management games, and the one that I came across that looked the most promising was Backpack Battles. It's a PvP inventory management auto battler. It's still in early access, but (laughs) what's cool about this is you can... The way that you place your items in your inventory determines their power or strength or something. I don't know exactly how it works, but I thought that was cool. And of course... They interact. Yeah, they, they interact based on how they're placed. Uh, plus you can combine different items to make even more powerful items. You know, the, the placement of items in inventory, that's one thing that I always liked about aliens fire team. Um, I didn't really like that game, but the one thing that I took away from it that I did like was when you unlocked or purchased perks, you had to put them in this, um, in this inventory that was blocked out and it would only fit in certain areas. And then when you stacked different upgrades, they were in different shapes. So you had to fit them together like Tetris in order to get them in there. Um, So the better you did that, the more, uh, the more you would get out of it. So I always thought that was really cool, even though I didn't care much for that game. I don't know why I like that, but Maybe that's why these inventory management games appeal to me. This one is PVP, though, which I thought was interesting. Um, And I don't know if it's asynchronous because the Steam page says play against real builds of other players. So I don't know if you're actually playing them like 1v1 in real time, but I don't think that's the case. I think they just make their builds and then you challenge like other builds that are are out there but there's ranked and casual mode so hey when i heard pvp only i was like eh, i don't know man i don't want to get all sweaty with this but if there's casual mode then maybe it won't be so bad and it's asynchronous that would be even better um the other one that i looked at was backpack heroes very close in name to backpack battles but backpack battles was cheaper and it had much higher ratings than backpack hero so this may be one that I'm checking out. I played a zombie survival one 
where there's so the the ratings were so good and basically it's just you know this grid like a diablo-esque grid and you do your best to like fit all your supplies in there and if you put the bullets near the rifle they'll automatically load into the rifle and so that gains you that little slot and so you got to kind of think of the way you do it and the whole time you hear but of course you you don't (laughs) there's no graphics it's just this fucking grid (laughs) yeah i thought it was so dumb it was like it was like a 99 cents but the reviews were excellent but i i didn't get it but this looks i think like something like maybe you'll get a little puzzle fighter out of it puzzle fighter was sick do you guys did you guys ever play that i've never played puzzle fighter this looks awesome i like the art style of this it reminds me of uh potion craft it's the same. It's like Street Fighter. Yeah. A Street Fighter character is like Ryu versus um, Ken, and each one of them had special blocks on their Tetris uh, match three game and different kind of special attacks. And if you got a crazy combo, your little miniature guy would like do a crazy combo on the other miniature guy. It was great. Puzzle Fighters were great. Hmm. Huh. Oh, okay. So yeah, that was Backpack Battles. High possibility I'll be checking that out next week. Dude, you're on a you're on what we might call a theme, a rip and tear. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh... See, it, well, it, it'll be the rip and the tear. <laughs> yeah, there's a stupid line from a movie that nobody knows, Major League Two. I don't know if you guys seen that. Saw it in the uh, theater though, but I did see. I, it, yeah. I remember him talking about, uh, or the coach says, <laughs> "We won yesterday. We won today. That's called two in a row. If we win, <laughs> if we win tomorrow, they call that a streak." <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm I'm almost at two in a row here. Might turn into a streak. My, I have a favorite quote from Teen Wolf that's very similar to that. I wonder who copied whose homework. Anyways, I'm going to talk about Mechabellum, which is the PvP uh, auto battler. You set up your armies opposite each other. Every round you get a, an amount of cash. And there's a rock, paper, scissors, gun, dynamite, sniper dynamic going on where... Certain units do hard counter each other, but it's also a lot about where you position those units. And there's a fair bit of strategy uh, to this game. And I think what separates it from um, what separated it from other auto battlers like the League of Legends one is they have a lot of randomization in those games. And Mechabellum, yes. you and your opponent get the exact same thing every round, like the exact same amount of money, the exact same cards to choose from. You can both choose the same card. So you're on much more of an even playing field. And so when you win, you feel like you deserve it. And when you lose, you also unfortunately feel like you deserve it. So it's a double-edged sword. Uh, but what's new about it since last time I talked is 1.0 is coming down the pipe the day before my birthday, September 26th. And this game has been in development for a long time, and it's come a long way from when I first played it. The UI is completely revamped. Everything feels super satisfying. They have like a Footman Frenzy PvP mode that's a little bit more casual uh, because it's PvE PvP. Uh, Super fun, this game. Makes you feel like Napoleon when you get it right. And uh, I can't wait for 1.0 and their final release to come. And I'm going to be playing a lot of Mechabellum in the next two weeks for sure. It's going to be a problem. Uh, it's already been a problem. I think I have like 70 hours in Mechabellum. <laughs> when does 1.0 drop? <laughs> September 26th. Ooh, very yep. nice. Who's counting? Nice, dude. Pico Park, Nick. Yeah, Pico Park 2. Uh, so this is a very cute game. It's a uh, very quick rounds and things like that. Um, I never played Pico Park 1. However, I've seen streamers play it. Some other people play it. It's a platforming game that involves um, different aspects of like puzzle solving and things like that. Um, it's two to eight players. It just seems like a lot of fun. It's not very expensive. It's also $8. It's $8.09 right now. Um, there's games that you go horizontally. There's games that you go vertically. There's games where you switch like gravity and things like that. There's games where you have to like stack each other up. Um, it just ends up being, I don't want to say like a WarioWare game where you're doing like a bajillion mini games, but there's just a lot of problem solving. They call it an action puzzle game. Um, I don't see the action too much from what I saw, but it just looks like fun. It looks like another party game that you can play with like some friends for a game night. So check it out. Pico Park 2. Are you working together or? Uh, some games you're working together. Some games you're not. Okay. 
Yeah. Nick, you're also huh. on a theme of two. Yeah. Wow, That's, you know, we're so themed out. Call that interesting. Back to back. Um, maybe next week will be a streak. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Emilio, what do you got? Uh, what do I have? I was so I was drawn into Pico Part Two. Um, Eugenics. Okay, so Edmund McMillan is working on a game, and uh, he made by Neil of Isaac and worked on Super Meat Boy, um, and a few other games. Anyway. Um, he is working on this turn-based turn -based tactical cat game. Uh, it is you, you play as a team of cats that are, I don't know, going on an adventure. There's not a whole lot out there. He's very, like, open book, very transparent. Like, every couple weeks, they're, they're putting more gameplay. Like, hey, today we added cuddlers. <laughs> and they just post it on there, you know? Um but I think the selling point here is that you take your cats and they have uh, deficiencies or or disabilities, um, but it ends up having um, a, it affects the game state. So so you could have a cat with autism, which <laughs> is like very bad at everything, but very good at one thing. And so other things like every, the, all the disabilities are in there. Like, and they say there, they, it's like one of the big things that they're like, there's like over a hundred mutations and a hundred items and a hundred <laughs> deficiencies. Like, <laughs> like and you mix them all together. And so you can take two cats and breed them and get a new cat with, even more <laughs> deficiencies that somehow help your gameplay. You know, he makes weird games for sure. And, uh, you know, you, um, if you don't have something to hide behind to you, there's certain cats that poop and you can hide behind the poop, stuff like that. There's a lot of poop in his games, a lot of weirdness, uh, but it looks good. And everybody in my house likes cats except for me, but, um, hopefully I can get Sam to play this. She's a big Bang of the Isaac fan. <laughs> Everyone poops. Um, I pooped today. Did you guys? I did. Nice. Yeah, like five times. Five um, times. Collect and breed <laughs> bloodlines in a legacy roguelike. I thought that was, uh, you know, like, was it Rogue Legacy, Bobby? Mm-hmm. That's a good name of, that's a good way of like saying that. Re legacy roguelike where the offspring of your last run gets some of what, mm. whatever, whatever uh, you had going on. Yeah. Yeah. So Listen anyway. up, Megaloot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just joke <joking>. offspring <laughs> you're so short-sighted about your backpacks all right what else we got uh i saw a tiktok where he was uh like soliciting deficiencies from his audience uh, Edmund mcmillan yeah. and he was like should i add yeah. autism to the game and everyone's like yes please add autism i want to be represented in this uh <laughs> guys it's the game where you make money guessing a video game sound. There's $60 in the pot. You would email pixelshitshow at gmail.com to guess. Uh, patrons get two guesses, and here's a sound you've all been guessing for so long. I mean, pretty easy. I don't know what's the... Everyone's having such a hard time. This week, uh, I chose a random answer, and Warconius sent in two guesses... Guess number one is Earth Siege from 1994. Burst firing laser blasters from an HERC. Nick, I don't even know. What is an HERC? Dude, Do you know? Just uh, I'm guessing hook. high explosive recoilless cannon. I'm guessing. <laughs> that's the only fucking military shit I can pull out my butt right now. Like, that's what it sounds no like. No hesitation. I love that. Okay. And his second guess was from the game Shattered Steel 1996. Burst fire energy weapon from... Uh, AGV, Nick, help me out. AGV, what do we got? Uh, assault ground vehicle. <laughs> That's what I'm guessing. <laughs> I've, it's, it's, it's pretty, he's pretty good at this. It's I uncanny. have no fucking clue, dude. It's uncanny. It's one. uncanny. Okay. If I were but Nick, if I were shooting lasers from my GGB, what would that be? Uh, your great gaping butthole. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Five right. times today. Five times. Five times. Why did we I'm just right. walk past that comment? That's too much shit for one person in one day. I'm sorry. Okay. 
Uh, guys, what are we feeling about these guesses? Highly specific. We were in the 90s, so he's paying attention. They're coming from Max. What do, what's up? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to come out and say it. I think everybody in the 90s were sharing audio files, and every game has the same fucking thing. <laughs> I think you're right. I think that's what's happening. <laughs> I think people were pirating things like crazy. Everybody's right, and everybody's wrong at the same time. <laughs> um, I guess that is, yeah. I guess I do worry about that, the shared sound libraries. And, like, I can't play every mech game, or I haven't played every mech game. But, unfortunately, uh, Warconius. That is correct, shorty. You didn't get it. And uh, I want to thank you for your guesses, though. You know, every time a little guest pops up in our Gmail, I get all excited. What's people? What are people thinking about? Sometimes they tell us a small story about why they're listening to the podcast and where they're from. And I look forward to opening those emails and reading those guesses, even if they're all incorrect. So you guys have to do better. Next week. What was Warconius is, uh, here riding on a moose thinking about? <laughs> Warconius has sent in and contacted us so many times that he gets straight to business. There's no messing yeah, around. He does. Yeah, there yeah, is yeah. No, the mess there's no, no introductions needed. Yeah. Those come Warconius. in the listener questions. He really fills us in once a week, uh, and we look forward to that every week. Uh, so next week, guys, there's going to be $65 in the pot from this wrong guest from Warconius. Uh, but luckily, Bobby, Emilio, and Nick always have an opportunity to help you guys uh, by unlocking hints. So the current hints are mech and 90s. But we're going to play a little game today, and this is, I don't know, really difficult uh, so you might not get a hint this week, but all I want to know without Googling, without changing the lighting, without consulting with a higher power, just give me three animes each and they can't repeat. I'll start with Emilio. Oh boy. Um, vampire hunter D. Okay. Uh, Nicholas. Uh, any Okay. Bobby? We got to go obscure, Nick. We got to go obscure. So I know. Bobby I'm going obscure. I'm going obscure. Dragon Ball Z. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Amelia? Um, um, okay. Uh, Fatal Fury. Uh, oh, Jujutsu oh, Kaisen. Oh. Wait. Fatal Fury? Was that an anime series? No, it was a mo full full length movie. Got it. Um, got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah, you found it. Yes, I did. Nick. Okay, cool. Uh, I said Jujutsu Kaisen. Okay, a manga series. Love it, Bobby. Does Pokemon count? It does. Yes. Bing. Okay, last last try, Emilio. Okay. Think of Mia. Uh, I'm going to go with Ninja Scroll. That is one. Okay. A, nice. Nicholas? Um, I'm going to go with My Hero Academia. Of course. Uh, Bobby? Uh, one Punch Man. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> You guys, yes, yeah. we got I it. really, I really thought he might not. I don't know if he could pull three anime. Bobby was the anchor, but we got him on the boat. Yeah, <laughs> oh my God. we got him on the boat. That's great. So, Next in anime, in this is so like out of my, out of comfort my comfort zone. zone. Yeah, yeah. Bobby, do you, uh, you haven't seen Once Punch Man, huh? No. Highly recommend. Bill Burr says it's Highly his favorite cartoon of all time. Yeah, it's so good, man. It's kind of, he's kind of like you. He's like you, just fucking understated, just fucking bored with life, but somehow also a superhero. It's awesome. Hmm. Yeah. He's just like, that's him. That's him. Mm. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> like big that's fucking you dragon some, comes out. He usually responds mm. to shit. Mm. The new season's coming uh, out this, 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 the end of this year. Good role yeah. play. You can take the Lego out of the childhood, but you can't take the role play out of the man. Okay. A new hint was just unlocked. Guess what, guys? Drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> the hint was anime. The hint is anime. And see, anime game, hint is anime. I'm trying to make it so that, you know, maybe if you're paying attention, you can extrapolate if these guys don't get it, okay? Maybe go back, listen to a couple episodes, see, hmm, what might have been those hints been if they were... If they this had to be a game, right? Yes. It, it's a game, right? For sure. From the, the sound? Yeah. 
the game where you make money guessing a video game sound is from a game. Okay, just you making betcha. sure. Okay, of course. Okay. Yep, you betcha. You're the financier right. of this, and you fucking don't know. <laughs> right, whatever. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, I threw dollar bills out there, and all the monkeys dance. Right? <laughs> just go. Look at them, look at Entertain dance. me, clowns. Uh, Emilio, subs and donos? Um, what does that mean? Um, who subscribed with Prime? There's no name there. Oh, that's my bad. Uh, Atom. Oh, Atom. Thanks, buddy. Subscribe for 12, 12, 12, 12 months. Currently on a se- se- seven month win streak. K- 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 kill shot. Damn, dude. Thanks, man. Awesome. Mid month sub, too. Usually we get them at the beginning. People get paid. Yeah. Well, it resets, you know. So when we get them later, I'm like, good for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry you've been tricked. <laughs> <laughs> Hit us with the listener questions, Bobby. All right, we got a few listener questions here. First one is from A Tom. What TV series that ended do you wish still kept going for a few more seasons? I would pick Fringe. It was such a great sci fi show. Yeah, probably not alone on that one. Um, let's go to Emilio. What's your show? <laughs> I don't remember what my answer was. Uh, <laughs> so, Christian, what was your yours? Uh, I think well, I Stargate think Atlantis could have kept going. Uh, they kind of had to wrap it up really quick with the storyline. And um, I love the Stargate universe. Stargate SG-1, I think, was, I want to say, nine seasons or ten seasons. So maybe that one went on for a little too long. Uh, Stargate Atlantis was canceled, I believe, after four seasons. And I just, they had so many threads that are never answered. What happened to the Janai? Why did the Wraith all of a sudden all decide to blitz towards Atlantis? Why leave this galaxy you've been exploring for four seasons so suddenly um, and leave the people there to, you know, suffer in the peril of these blood sucking alien vampires? So, Stargate Atlantis is my answer. Nice. Hmm. That's I, I forgot that they had a Stargate Atlantis show, to be honest. Um, I do have a answer for this, only because my reference to the show is kind of weird. Uh, it's Firefly. Um, I actually didn't watch Firefly when it premiered, all this other stuff. Um, I used to volunteer at a trading card shop, um, and so when we were there and there was no customers because nobody shows up at like 2 in the afternoon at a fucking Magic Gathering shop... Um, we would watch Firefly and I was like, Oh, this show's so good. And then I remember like the second to last episode, I'm like, dude, when's it like how long is how many episodes are in the next season? They're like, There is no next season. I'm like, What the fuck? <laughs> Whoa, how was there no on, one? <laughs> Maybe you don't know this. You know that the season finale was a full length movie? Yes. You know about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay, I, yeah, good. I found out about that. Um, but that that show could have been so much. Like I remember people watching it and I remember, you know, talking to Leslie at length about it. Like that could have been like the next Star Trek or Star Wars, like not Star Wars, Star Trek or like very good. Battlestar Galactica and things like that. Like it was a very good TV show, sci-fi show. It was well rounded. The cast was not, like pretty dope. It just had all the. I think it it was a product of a time that didn't see its potential. Like if you made that shit now, you probably would get some. You probably get a lot of a lot of people watching it and demanding for like another season. Yeah, you're probably right. I think timing, cultural timing, like it's not something you can really foresee. But um, yeah, that was that would have done really well. Now, Nick, um, do you me, remember? Oh, really oh, quick, sorry. Uh, in Firefly, does anyone remember? I think it's episode five or six. There's only twelve episodes, uh, but they go to this planet, and the, the big tough guy with the gun, Jane, they he found out that the local inhabitants like praise him as a folk hero, and I they like re- have made him. No, you don't. That's I don't remember one. that. I only watched each episode maybe like once or twice. Like I think I watched okay. it once when I was in the shop, and then I watched it once with like Leslie, and I, I don't remember the that hero much. of Canton, the man they call Jane. They it's like a little jingle, and sometimes I sing it to myself. I don't like still to this day. It's just catchy. Um, <laughs> if you're out there and you know the my, hero of Canton, let me know. Pick me on Discord. Okay, I need I need friends. I need friends. My, my <laughs> version of that is in is in Oblivion. There's a town called Kavach, and you can you save the town from like an oblivion incursion at one point. And they're like, Look, it's him, the hero of Kavach. And you're like, Hey, that's me, guys. How's it going? <laughs> Sell me some tomatoes. Christian, you just reminded me of something that um, I like to recommend this soon. It's anytime that I can. There's a documentary called Searching for Sugarman, and it's about this um, 
singer that put out some songs in the 70s or 80s and never went nowhere, ended up homeless. Uh, but little did he know, in Australia, his shit exploded and everybody was always listening to it. It was gigantic, just like huge, huge right. megastar. But nobody knew. And then so one guy, a documentarian, went looking, searching for Sugar Man, found out that he was homeless, and then fucking took him to Australia, and then boom, just fucking superstar. Oh, yeah. that's it's, awesome. It's a great documentary. That's like this yeah. podcast in Lithuania. You know, we constantly <laughs> talk the yeah, charts, we, but <laughs> we ripped that Lithuanian culture. Yo, send me some Lithuanian slang, and I'll, and I'll say it on, on the mic as long as it's not racist or homophobic or transphobic or any kind of phobic. Yeah. Uh, for me, it would be. Uh, scavenger rain i just watched that on hbo max max less i don't know this year i thought it was fucking fantastic i um it is self-contained like you're good there's a good ending and i don't need more but i would like more and so well, it's, a ni- it's nice when a show knows it's ending and then it can it can end they can actually have yeah. an ending uh, yeah. like parks yeah. and rec they got they were like oh we're getting canceled let's end the show wait no we're not and then like they have some weird contrivance uh, to carry the show on or futurama another case of that all right next question from j beck quest the wife and i recently got custody of an eight-year-old girl and i've been slowly introducing her to pc gaming she really enjoys goat simulator 3 but i want to start with a game that her uh, that we can play together. Uh, what are your recommendations for games to play with kids? No Minecraft or Terraria. Uh, I got one. Um, all right. What do you got, Nick? Um, untitled goose game. It's, uh, there's nothing bad for kids in it. It's great for an eight year old. The controls are very easy. Kids love animals and they love mischief. And this is the game for that. Um, it's very intuitive. It's very open ended so that kids don't have to follow like a strict story. And then the other thing is that it gets everybody to laugh and there's really interaction with almost everything. So I would say, yeah, um, untitled goose game. Is that a single player or multiplayer game? So that's a single player game, I believe. Um, however, it's amazing for like couch, like playing with a family with you. Like, hey, yo, go, go step on the fucking shovel, you know, or like, go, mm-hmm. go eat the berries. Everybody's shouting out things to do kind of thing. Oh, Nicholas, okay. I think this game is actually co-op, if I remember right. Untitled Goose Game. Is it now co-op? Then maybe that was an update that came to it, but I'm pretty sure it is co-op now. Yeah. Jeez. So it fits right in the question. You got Ooh, it, there dude. You go. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, well, I was going to suggest the costume quest games because Halloween is coming up, but I had forgotten that both of those are just strictly single player games. So not, uh, not something you can really play with someone there. What Amelia has you, an eight year old girl or an 11 year old girl. He has kids in his house. Yeah. I was going to say like what age really is, but because, um, a little nightmares is good, but eight year olds a little it is pretty fucking creepy. But yeah. Um ten, eleven, twelve, she we had a really good time with that. We played all the way through the first one, all the way through the second one. And as far as actually I've been thinking about this recently, like how do you get how do you get a really young kid, like four or five, to get general mechanics down? You know, left, right, up, jump, stuff like that. And um we oh i downloaded that thing nick that you talked about all the super nintendo games those games are fucking hard super fucking hard yeah they were made for not people Uh, not having saves or uh, friends you know you just kept trying (laughs) really hard man and so uh i mean not hard for me but uh yeah for a four-year-old or even a 10-year-old like those are hard um so i'm not exactly sure you said that you played uh that vivian plays something where you can't die right uh, so in Super Mario World, it's not that they can't, she can't die. She can rewind the game. Uh, she can rewind the game up to like five minutes. So if she does die, she literally clicks L2 and R2 at the same time and then just goes back 30 frames before she died and tries again. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. And this is on the same thing that I just talked about. Correct. Super Nintendo game? Mm-hmm. Okay. I didn't know that. Oh, I forgot since last time you told me. Yeah, I thought it all right, we've got two questions from Warconius. Uh, he says Forza Horizon 4 and 5 are getting delisted from Steam, presumably due to licensing. Uh, it's also a good sign that Forza Horizon 6 
is coming out. Are you more of an arcade racer or do you like to get sweaty with the racing sims? I think that I've graduated from one to the other. When uh, I used to play PlayStation, I was a big um, Gran Turismo guy, and that's more on the simulation side. But now that I'm older, I care a lot less about like the nitty gritty stuff, and I just want to have fun. So I'm way more into the Forza stuff. Hmm. Nicholas? Uh, I am very much still in the racing simulation um i had like a realization when i was a kid or not a kid like a teenager um i used to play a lot of gran turismo like a lot of gran turismo 4 in specific um and then i decided to play something called the ridge racer and i'm like why can i just keep fucking drifting 100 percent of the time this is weird um so yeah unless your racing game is that racing game in arcades where you can have 12 players at once and you're going around like nascar or your racing game is gran turismo or forza i don't really care um, I just, so, uh, uh, have you tried this uh, series, the Horizon series? I've tried the Forza series, yeah, and then I've also tried the um, Burnout. I've tried um, what's the other one that starts with a C? I tried a couple of the other other different like arcade um, driving games. I just didn't like them. Fuck, I'd, I'd rather play Mario Party than most arcade based. Uh, I mean, Mario Kart more than most arcade based uh, racers. So, uh, so Forza, not Forza Horizon, is a simulation. Uh, mm. But Forza Horizons is more the arcade version. Oh, okay. They don't make the they don't make the Forzas as often. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. All right, and he's got one more question here. In video games, would you rather hear original compositions or licensed music, or are you a psychopathic monster and just mute the music? Agree on that comment, by the way, Warconius. That last one, hard <laughs> agree, hard agree, hundred <laughs> yeah. uh, percent. I feel like that's directed at me, and I'll have you know, I only mute music in PvP games, and oftentimes muting the music is done as like a reaction to opening a game for the first time and getting my eardrums blown out by the sound. So uh, that's always enjoyable. Um, but yeah, I, I mute in any sort of PvP game, but in any other game, I would, uh, I'll usually leave it on because it usually goes along with the game is like important to the game in some respect. And I think when I was younger, I was a lot more impressed when I heard licensed music in a game just because it wasn't done nearly as often. I remember hearing licensed music in battlefield vietnam and just being like wow oh, yeah. they they could actually do this and, and also in the grand theft auto games on the radio you would hear some of that as well but it's a lot more common now not not really that exciting and i think there's a lot of cool things about original compositions for for video games i mean number one it's tailored to the game um so it, it usually fits a little more and it and it gives people jobs too and there's some really great ones out there. Like we were talking just a few weeks ago about the music from Doom Eternal, which I think is a great example of composed music for a video game. Yeah. And the, it adapts to what's going on. That's it. Very good. We never would have got the Gregorian chants of Star Wars Republic Commando with licensed music from even the Star Wars franchise, right? You know, you play a Star Wars game, you hear Star Wars music, it's expected, but that they went in a new direction with it and that actually made it interesting and fit the theme of the game was really cool. And the original compositions in video game music is what I usually listen to uh, at work, just as like behind, because it's meant to be behind the scenes anyways, you know? It's meant to kind of fade into the background or accentuate what's going on in the game. It doesn't usually have a lot of heavy lyrics in it, uh, which most other music, uh, does so i love the original compositions like the hades soundtrack are you kidding you know like so some good. of the best music ever i think is in video games honestly so yeah so good that i put it into my uh counter-strike 2 soundtrack nice <laughs> uh, you could take cds from some game and you could put it in the other game so i have that playing as my counter-strike 2 music sweet very cool very nice nick mm. i have a hard uh, opinion I don't have a hard opinion, believe it or not. I like a mixture of both. Um, one of my like standout like game centered games that doesn't use licensed music that's one of the best is in Baldur's Gate. When you fight Raphael, if you choose to fight him, he is singing the song, and when you interact uh -huh. with him, um, 
things happen in the song, and it's just a great fucking song in general. It's arguably one of the best fights in RPGs, in my in my opinion, that isn't just one room, because there's plenty of fights in other RPGs where you're like going room to room and all these other things. This is just a fucking one room slugfest. Um, it's very difficult. It's very fun. There's a warning before you even go into Avernus where it's like, you are doing one of the hardest fights in the game. Make sure that whatever you do, you have everything you need because you cannot leave and come back in. Um, and so it, there's, it's a very like high stakes. You're, you're very nervous from everything else that's going on. And when that fight starts, and that music starts, you're like, Oh, this is not the normal battle track. This is pretty sick. But then again, there's other games and calling out to like my childhood, like ATV racer, whatever the fuck it was called. Um, you had like Lincoln park and limp biscuit and shit like that. And you're riding ATVs that over was cool. jumps. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're like, yeah. <laughs> You had like Casey. Like a lot of people, like the Tony Hawk games were like that too for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. And then you you just had like killing in the name of. You just it was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was a good time. Uh, it. So I, I I'm a mix of both. I like when games have both. Um, but you definitely, I don't know. I don't have a hard cut for either one. Hmm. All cool. right, riding the fence. Yeah. That's all right. That is all our listener questions. What's everybody playing next week? I think work is finally going to let up. Let up. And, I've heard uh, this before. Just, I don't know. I, I can't know. trust you, dude. I can't trust I you. I can't trust them, dude. <laughs> the man. The man. Uh, and uh, also, I met uh, like a board gaming magic playing friend today. Um, and it's my, it's Sam's high school friend's husband. So we're already planning a D&D thing. So uh, I don't know. Maybe Online or in person? This week. In person. Nice. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Congrats. Like two wives, two husband, and a GM. Very, very, very uh, fun to find in-person things like that. Good luck on your new yeah. friend. Don't scare him away. Yeah. yeah. Be on your best behavior, dude. We're rooting for you. Okay. <laughs> dude, I was holding in so many farts. It was fucking <laughs> Farts? So you were holding in so much shit. You're like, I can't. Yeah. I need to shit right now. That too. Uh, I think I'm going to play Star Trucker. Uh, it is a. I never. I never played any of the uh, uh, trucking simulators. Any of the trucking simulators. They seem like too sweaty, too realistic. But that in space, you got me. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, yeah. you got me. Yeah. So your hooks are in. Yeah. Uh, Star Trucker gonna be giving that a whirl, seeing what's up. It's awesome. Hmm. All right. What about you, Nick? Uh, I'm gonna be playing more Space Marine Two. I'll be looking to actually beat the game with Leslie and then starting the PVE mode because I didn't know the fucking PVE mode was an RPG where you can level up guns and classes and shit. So now I'm super into that. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to check it out. Hmm. Right. So you're doing it with two characters, uh, but you can go up to three, right? Correct. Okay. And we will help you with your campaign and or PVE aspect. Me and Leslie are like volunteers right now. <laughs> There's people that we know <laughs> that play alone and we're like, we'll, we'll help you if you need We'll also explain cool. useless lore if you like. Uh, that that's like a tax that comes with. It. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you see Pay here, this marking is of the Death Watch, and uh, they're a company, and they're like, dude, please, this is 30 seconds into the game. I'm like, All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Star Trekker game looks pretty good, but this week I will be playing some sort of inventory management game, most likely, be it Backpack Battles or Backpack Hero. Um, I also discovered a game called Traveler's Rest that looks like it has potential to be the next, not the next Stardew Valley, though there'll never be another Stardew Valley, but um, at least a uh, some sort of satisfying substitute for it because uh, I guess I saw some article where uh, Concerned Ape, the developer of Stardew Valley, said like he hasn't touched Haunted Chocolatier in a year and he's been focused entirely on getting that 1.6 update for Stardew Valley out to console players. So looks like it's going to be uh, a while till, um, till we see Haunted God. Chocolatier. So I'm still on the lookout for something that can partially crazy, rip up. Dude. He has the... You got the money. Just fucking pay some team to fucking port it over. I, I that... don't think it's that simple. I don't know. Yeah. He it has probably, the magic touch. Isn't. He yeah. has the magic touch yeah. for whatever reason. Right. And, yeah. But yeah. Bobby. For... Uh, Bobby, when I saw this Lego Stardew Valley, the first thing I thought was, oh, they made a Stardew Valley that was Lego themed. I was like, oh, what a great idea for a game. I'm surprised <laughs> they haven't done that yet. <laughs> yeah. 
the licensee. Uh, Traveler's Rest, I played on a Steam Next Fest. It was one of those demos with no time limit. I think I put like nine hours into it. I was like, oh shit, I owe these guys money when this comes out for real, when it's not a demo. Uh, but oh, nice. I did w- want to wait for 1.0, but it's so fun, dude. I think you're going to love that if you give it a whirl. Awesome. And it's co-op too. It's local co-op. It has Steam Remote Play. So uh, there's a there's a lot of good games out there in the Stardew Valley genre, but so many of them are just single player. So that's why this one really stood out. All right. I think that's an episode. Um, speaking for Bobby. Christian, Nick, and myself, Space Marine Tits, Armored, Supple. Mm-hmm. Okay. Was it, what is, was it, Ceramite? Is that, did I got it? What, Nick? Ceramite, what it's called? Ooh, I know some lore, I know some lore. <laughs>